In this video, I'm going to explain how to set your AC balance to TIGWATT Aluminum. I will go into detail about AC balance, frequency, and a lot more, so stick around because I think it'll be worth it. But if you're just here looking for where to set your machine quick because you need to lay a bead right this second, I won't drag that part out. If you're cranking up a new machine like me, if I'm unfamiliar and I haven't used it before, I'll just go for my default, which is 70-30 for the balance, which that means 70% on the penetration side, 30% on the cleaning side. If the machine has the ability to adjust the frequency, I'll head straight to 120 hertz. Now, if you want to know what all those settings mean, how they work, how they affect your weld, and why some machines have different types of options, then you'll wanna watch the rest of this video, and I think you'll come away with a much better understanding of how the, all those little knobs and buttons affect that little piece of electricity that's coming off the end of your tungsten. Starting off with, what is AC current, and what does it mean to balance it? AC stands for alternating current, and that is what comes out of the wall and is fed into your welder. You probably already knew that, but we will talk a little bit more about what comes out of the wall in a bit. Since AC current alternates, which means it's constantly reversing between positive and negative, it has an advantage when TIG welding aluminum over DC. DC is a direct current and does not switch polarity on its own. That's important because both AC positive and AC negative provide a benefit when you're welding aluminum. Aluminum forms a hard oxide layer across its surface when it's exposed to oxygen, and if you let that oxide layer get into your weld, it will contaminate it and it just won't look good. You can clean a lot of it off yourself by using a clean stainless steel wire brush. You won't want to use a regular steel brush that has been used on anything else or you'll be embedding those deposits into the aluminum. The longer the aluminum has been exposed to oxygen, the thicker the layer will be up to a certain point, of course. But even after wire brushing it yourself, it will immediately form a new thinner layer. This is where the positive side of that AC cycle comes in. Positive actually means electrode positive, so the current is moving from the workpiece up to the tungsten in the welding torch. When it does this, it blasts off that oxide layer on the aluminum. So, so far, it sounds like all you would want is AC positive, or as much as you can get, right? Before we get into the negative parts of AC positive, I wanna talk about this video sponsor, which is WD-40 brand, and more specifically, WD-40 specialist corrosion inhibitor. For me, I look at all my shop equipment and tools as an investment, and a lot of metalworking tools and even some woodworking tools are just bare metal because it makes more sense to work on a smooth metal surface than something that's painted. So some things get used a lot, some get used a little, but really it doesn't matter because if you leave them unprotected, they're at the risk of rust and corrosion, and that's where WD-40's corrosion inhibitor comes in. Corrosion inhibitor provides up to a year of protection so your tools can stay rust-free. I think it's a must for any environment, but definitely if you live somewhere with high humidity. Other than your tools and tables, corrosion inhibitor is great on chains, locks, hinges, pretty much anything that's metal that you're gonna be putting away in storage. I love nice looking tools, so I'm gonna be putting corrosion inhibitor on everything that I can possibly think of. If you wanna check out some for yourself, I'll leave a link right at the top of the description. You can get it through there. Now back to the downsides of AC Positive. Well, since the current is headed out of the aluminum and into the tungsten, you're not gonna get a lot of penetration into whatever you're welding, and the bead is gonna start getting really wide. And since all of your heat is headed into the tungsten, this will start to get too hot and actually start to ball up, which sometimes can be good, but if continued, it will actually burn the tungsten away. This is where the negative side of the cycle comes in. Making the tungsten electrode negatively charged and the aluminum positively charged, now the current and heat flows from the tungsten into the piece that you're trying to weld. This not only gives you that penetration that you need for a strong weld, but it also helps keeps your bead narrower and the etch zone on each side smaller, if that's something you're into. So now we understand why alternating current helps with aluminum TIG welding, but so far we've only been looking at this equal with a 50% in both directions. This is where adjusting the balance of AC comes in. When you change the balance on your machine, it is changing the percentage of time that the cycle spends on each side just like it shows on this Fronius Magic Wave. The type of machine you have will determine how the adjustment looks to you. On this Everlast machine, you change the balance by pushing the select button until the red light reaches balance, and then you adjust it with a dial. You will notice that this machine only displays one number. For Everlast, this represents the AZ positive or cleaning percentage, but on some other brands, 
they choose to display only the AC negative percentage or the penetration side. No matter how your machine chooses to display it, adjusting the balance affects the amount of time spent on the positive and the cleaning side and the negative penetration side. Right now, our welder is set at a 50-50 equal split between the two, just like it's shown here. If you were to add even more cleaning, like say 80% cleaning and 20% penetration, you would really see the tungsten heat up and start melting away. If we go the other way and set the balance to the original recommendation of 70% penetration and 30% for the cleaning, you can see that it holds the arc much better. All of these were done so far with the standard sine wave. More advanced machines come with the more desirable square wave and others, like mine, are adjustable. This Fronius Magic Wave can adjust the positive and negative side of the waveform independently, and you can adjust between a sine wave, the triangle wave, a soft corner square, and the regular sharp corner square. And same on this Everlast example, it's just displayed differently and adjusts both sides of the waveform at the same time. Changing the waveform from a sine to a square makes that transition from AC positive to AC negative instant and makes for a very precise feeling weld. All these waveforms have a little bit different sound and the hard corners on that square wave make this one of the harshest sounding, but in my opinion, the best. So up until now, we've been messing with the standard 60 Hertz that your machine will run if you're in the United States and it might be 50 Hertz in your country. And that's just determined by what comes out of your wall. The two main types of welders are transformer machines and the newer inverter machines. Transformer welders are the OG machines and they are usually really big and heavy because they contain a large transformer inside that is actually transforming the power from your wall into something that you can weld with. The newer inverter machines take that high voltage AC power that's coming from the wall plug and turns it into a low voltage DC. And then it also takes that 50 or 60 hertz frequency and by sending it through a bunch of electronic switches, it will increase it all the way up to 100,000 hertz on some machines. After it's done all that, it then sends the power to its own transformer. But now, a big heavy transformer is not required, allowing the overall size of the machine to be much smaller and lighter. If you are using an inverter machine, you have even more adjustment options. Since it's already changing the electrical frequency on the way in, now you have that too as an adjustment option. If this is a standard 60 hertz frequency square wave, meaning it cycles 60 times per second, the entire second isn't shown here, but you should get the idea. If we increase that frequency all the way up to 120 that we recommended as a good starting point, then you are increasing the amount of cycles per second to 120. The balance of how long each side of the arc stays at what we had it set, now it just does more of them faster. Welding with that high frequency, 120 hertz, you will notice a much higher pitch sound. The final bit of adjustment that we will briefly mention is the wave's amplitude control. On this Fronius machine, it's actually called AC offset, but it does the same thing. What it does is change the amount of amperage that is set to each side of the waveform. Up until now, each side has been treated equally as far as amps, and we were only adjusting how long the curve stayed on each side. Adjusting the AC offset in the 70% penetration and 30% cleaning example, we could stay with the shorter 30% cleaning time, but while it's there, give it more power than the penetration side. Or we could have a very short, low power cleaning side and a long, high amperage penetration side. This isn't something I've messed with myself. I may more in the future, but I could see this being really useful in a production environment where you can really tune your machine for a part that you might be welding over and over. So to quickly recap, AC welding cycles between positive and negative, providing a cleaning action on the positive side and a penetration cycle on the negative. The balance adjusts the time spent between each of those. I recommend starting with around a 70% on the negative side and a 30% on the positive, and then you can adjust from there. The waveform is the path the electricity is gonna take to get from one side to the other. So it's either gonna be really sharp and square or smooth or whatever. The frequency is how fast that transition is going to happen and how many times per second that that transition is going to happen. And the amplitude control is how much your total amps is going to be spent on each side of that cycle. 
I want to thank WD-40 brand for sponsoring this video, so check out WD-40 Specialist Corrosion Inhibitor if you have some equipment or tools that need some corrosion protection. Also, if you're interested in some welding gloves or fabrication sleeves, you can find the link to Defiant Metal down below. If you're new to my channel, I'm Justin Voss. I make welding and fabrication videos here on YouTube, so I hope you stick around and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up button. And if this video helps you in any way, let me know down in the comments. And that's it for this one. I'll see you next time.